I'd like to start with a bit of a show of hands because uh, it's easier to get you talking than it is me. Um, I'd like to learn who here has either learned to drive or is currently learning to drive. Excellent, we can relate. Um, what I'd like you to try and remember is that feeling when you're first learning to drive, and for different people it will be different things. For me, it was approaching roundabouts. Um, it's also being up on stage, so bear with me here. I'm having flashbacks. Um, but it's that feeling when you're in a slight mild panic. There's anxiety, there's a huge amount going on, uh, and frankly, you feel a little bit out of control. And for some people, that might be just sitting in the car for the very first time going, oh my god, somebody's given me a car. Uh, for others, it will be when a car, another vehicle, does something unexpected, swerves into your path. Uh, but as I say, for me, it was roundabouts. So you're approaching that roundabout, and you're trying to link up all of the mechanics at your disposal. You're trying to manage your throttle, your acceleration, your indicators, your mirrors, your road awareness, your actual speed, where other cars are, and what the heck they're doing. Um, all at the same time, all with this mild feeling of anxiety, hoping against hope that you can link up all of those mechanical items that you don't stall at the roundabout before you pull away. So I want you to remember that mild panic anxiety feeling. Because that's exactly the feeling an executive gets when they're facing a crisis. They're trying to process huge amounts of information about a situation that's unusual, difficult, different than what they expect to run through. They're trying to turn that into situation awareness and make decisions, hopefully, so they don't get themselves or their organizations deeper into trouble. Roughly 80% of people classify themselves as either above average, good, or excellent drivers. Now apparently, nobody's bothered to look at the statistics of that particular result because it just can't work. But if you classify it like that, how many people actually would say they're above average, good, or excellent at leading a business out of crisis? Personally, I don't think it's anywhere near that number. In fact, I'd say that many crisis leaders Many leaders don't have a clue whether they'd be good at it or not, because they haven't practiced. Now let's clarify what I mean by a crisis. I do not mean the day-to-day -day annoyances which make our days more difficult. The widgets don't arrive on the supply chain line. Uh, the server and for emails gone down for a few hours. These are annoyances, but they're not a crisis. I want to talk about the events which fundamentally threaten the survival of any given organization, which by tomorrow we might not exist, at least not in our current form. Those events you need to practice for. What do you do when you're actually learning to drive? What you're trying to do is put together all of those mechanics in a meaningful way. You're trying to process huge amounts of information to build yourself a mental picture, a situational awareness of what you're doing. Then you're trying to process that into decisions and take appropriate action to not get yourself deeper into trouble. Most of all, in that process, you spend a lot of time practicing. Hours and hours, and frankly, tests and tests, depending on uh, how well you take on that practice. But practice is actually quite challenging when you're talking about crisis. When you're talking about crisis leadership, what does that mean? Well, in many cases, it might be something quite simple. You could actually talk about really simple scenarios in a short space of time, maybe an hour or two, talking about your building being unavailable or burnt to the ground. Relatively simple in the sense of what would we do with people, how would we continue this organization. Those are really good because they get you through some of the mechanics, how we process information and make decisions in a nice, safe, controlled environment. I've seen people go to the other extreme and, and run exercises where aliens land on the stock exchange. Creative, I'll give you that, not terribly useful. At the extreme end, organizations and crisis leaders who've taken this really on, taken it to heart and want to be better at this, do exercises or events which might run over days or weeks. Take several hours, say, out of every single day for the board or the executive team to actually work through a real problem. And they'd face issues in their email and their web pages that would be sent to them in teleconferences and phone calls that they'd get in a whole host of other interactions to create a crisis world for them where they can start to manage through the problem, where they can start to work out how to process information, most of which in the initial stages of a crisis is actually wrong anyway, but how they process through that chaos and confusion to be meaningful leaders. So what does good crisis leadership actually look like? What attributes, behaviors, or skills do they exhibit that's somehow different from everyday management? Well, in many cases, it's moving beyond the mechanics. It's actually putting those aside. They've learned now how to steer the ship 
how to make all of that work. What they're now trying to do is understand their organization to take it to the next level, understand what principles and ethos and values of that organization really are, and how to reflect that into decisions they're going to make. They try to understand their people, what motivates them, what values they hold dear, so that you understand what they're going to do when a crisis occurs and how you can employ them and use them and get them involved. You also start to understand the environment, understand the market, the competitors, the regulators perhaps, so that you can actually start to understand the world beyond your own organization, the society and environment in which you exist, and fundamentally understand stakeholders. Stakeholders being investors, customers, anyone else. When you can get an understanding of that, good crisis leaders aren't just talking about crisis management anymore. They're actually talking about how you could do some horizon scanning and change and flex your organization before a crisis has ever occurred. The result being we actually build organizations which are much more resilient, adaptive, flexible, and changeable. But as I say, you're not talking about crisis management anymore. Now you're talking about resilience. Resilience is perhaps a topic for another day. So my theme and my message today around failure for key business leaders is to think about this one thing. If you don't want to fail, you need to practice a crisis. More specifically, if you don't want to fail, you've got to practice failing. Thank you.